So some more news came out about OB-68 today. It has nothing to do with balance like yesterday's, but it's still pretty big regardless. They're getting rid of the parts and pieces system for skins, so we won't be able to swap around our accessory and body pieces to make a unique combo anymore. We often ask them why we can't have skins like the ones in Paladin Strike, the mobile game. As you can see, these skins are really cool and are a lot different than the ones we currently have in Paladins. They are way more complex and detailed. The reason they can't make skins like this is because of the parts and pieces system. It limits what they can design because every head has to work well with every body. They can't let something clip through another piece of another skin. They've had a lot of really cool ideas in the past, like this Grok skin from closed beta that I bet many of you have seen by now. The reason they never released it is because they couldn't get the head and the body to work with his other skins. Now in this particular case, I don't know if they'll release the skin after they remove the system, but I hope they do because it's been a long time coming. The more skins they create, the more problems they face. Something like a simple ribbon or collar can completely tank an entire skin, or make what they settle on look less cool. Wonder if that's what happened to Mecha Drogos in Arctic Pip. There's also another big reason that they're removing the system. It has big impacts on the game's performance, and as they look to further optimize Paladins, they can't have stuff like that messing things up. Instead of loading one mesh per character, they have to load several different ones. The system also makes the UI pretty complicated. They have to maintain multiple screens, tabs, filters, and store functions, and it takes development time away from other things. They want to make better skins, have the game run better, and have the UI be cleaner, so in turn, this system is going to go away with OB68. They feel like the pros outweigh the cons with this, and after reading their explanations, I have to agree. It does suck that we won't be able to do unique combos anymore. I did really like using Goddess Leon with her default hair, or Tinder Cassie with her Dune Crawler goggles. But if they are going to give us better skins, like the skins in this concept art that they gave us, on top of the game running better, then I'll accept the removal of the system with open arms. Now, what about existing skins? What will happen to them when this update comes out? Well, all body and accessory skin collections will become one skin. If you owned any part of a skin, be it the body, accessory, or voice pack, you will be rewarded the full skin at no cost. All standalone accessories, like Parasite Ceres for example, will become one part skins that combine the accessory with the base model. If you own the accessory, you'll get the skin at no cost. Weapon skins will be remaining independent. You can still mix character and weapon skins together, thankfully. This was my biggest thing about this update. I'm really glad they let us do this. Most of my skin combos are a full skin with a different weapon. The weapon is the main thing you see after all, so it's important that you could swap it around to your liking. There will be certain skins that will be removed from the game, like Lini Ying and Nova Strike Kinesa have a lot of different accessories. So what they're going to do is they're going to find the best looking combo of accessory and body and make that the full character skin. The other pieces will be removed, and if you own those pieces, you will be compensated. As for common and uncommon recolors, every character will only have one recolor skin available. That skin will be purchasable with gold. You will also be refunded gold for any of the other recolor skins that you may own. They will also be messing with how voice packs work. Voice packs are now tied to the purchase of the character's default voice pack. If you own a character's default voice pack, you can access any voice packs for skins you currently own or purchase in the future for that character. Players who previously owned skin voice packs, but not the default character voice pack, will be retroactively awarded that pack. And that is it. That's everything they told us today about how the skin system will work in OB68. What do you guys think? I'm sure a lot of you are bummed about the limited customization, but some of you are probably thrilled to get better skins and better performance. Let me know your thoughts. You guys gave me a lot of comments on yesterday's video that I still need to fully go through. And that's pretty much it, guys. I want to thank you all for watching. I very much appreciate it, and I'm going to see you guys later. Bye!